Good morning, everybody. We're live here from the Bird House, giving you an update about the different bird activity going around in the upstate New York area, as well as some different bug activity, some mammal activity. We've got a little bit of everything today. Some different photos um, that you guys have sent in. We'll share those. As always, if you have any questions, you can put those in the comments, but we also love to know what kind of things you're seeing out there. So you can put those in the comments as well. Um, or you can just say hi and say hello. So we will get started here. And uh, first thing we've got going on is we do have our caption contest going on again. And this is the newest photo that's going on for the caption contest now. And this is on our Facebook page. So if you go onto the Birdhouse Facebook page, you'll see this photo here that has been recently posted uh, about a day ago, I believe. And um, Whoever comes up with a comment that gets the most reactions, whether it be comments on that comment or likes or, you know, little hearts or any of those little emoji characters, you win a $25 gift certificate for the store. So it's absolutely free to enter and uh, you can win a gift certificate to the store. So go ahead and pop on our Facebook page and put your best comment in there for the caption contest. We also, if you're in the upstate New York area, have a bird walk going on this Thursday, which is the 22nd. Um, that'll be at High Acres Nature Area. You can visit our website, which is thebirdhouseny.com for more information about that, but that's going to be going on at nine o'clock and that is on Thursday, the 22nd. So that should be lots of fun. Um, I've been taking some photos, snapping some photos out and about, uh, both in the backyard and um, just while out hiking. So I thought I'd share a couple of those with you. Nothing super thrilling, but I've been seeing lots of these out there. These are ladybug nymphs. So I thought I'd share that because um, the ladybug juveniles, if you will, look so, so much different than the adults. So if you see these little creatures crawling around on your plants, um, that's a good thing. They go after aphids and other garden pests. And uh, don't be surprised if you see a whole bunch of ladybug nymphs. So they do have a pretty interesting life, uh, life cycle. So ladybugs are absolutely great in the garden if you want to control your aphids. I know I've got a whole bunch that are uh, popping out all over my plants. So I'm encouraging these guys as best as I can. But this is what your typical ladybug life cycle looks like. So they start off as an egg, like all insects do. And then they have different what are called instars, just like caterpillars do. They slowly start to grow. So these are the little nymphs that grow. And then they'll pupate. So you might start to see these too. Uh, shortly on your plants. Um, they almost look like a little hardened shell that's uh, attached right to your plant. And then out of that will pop out the ladybug. So lots of ladybug nymphs out and around, at least in my garden and probably in yours too. Um, I still saw some carrot beetles over the weekend. Nothing too, too thrilling there, but they were out buzzing around at night and I snapped this picture here, there was a whole bunch out um, a couple week weekends ago when I was uh, out looking for some bugs at night um, around Memorial Day weekend. There was a whole bunch, but there's still some carrot beetles out there. But what I really noticed over this past weekend was a lot of this out in the fields. And this is in a big field of goldenrod. But if you are out by any kind of um, you know, mild flower meadow or field. Take a look at some of the plants. You might see these little bubbles that are around, almost around the top of the plants. And that's from something called a spittle bug. And so if you were to, um, you know, take that piece of plant and just kind of dig around there in that little, um, that, that little mess of bubbles there inside, what you would find is this little creature. And this is the spittle bug or it's frog hopper nymph and it's the the young nymph of a type of insect and basically what it's doing it's feeding off of the the, the plant it's drinking the uh, the fluid that's coming out of the plant and then these little bubbles are what it excretes and that's what causes all of these little bubbles to come out and be around the plant so it does give them some protection as well from predators, but that's what would be inside that little spittle, if you will. And then this is what they end up looking like once they're an adult and then they're called a frog hopper. So noticed a lot of that out there 
this weekend. So I thought I would show you that too. So this is what it looks like if you're out in a field. You'll see all those little tiny bubbles um, in the tops of different plants. So that's your spittle bug. Um, nothing too dramatic there. And then that's what they look like. They're one of those little hopper bugs um, once they're adults. A few weeks ago, I talked about how the place I go camping, there was a fresh burrow and was not sure what was cut co was causing that. So set up a trail cam and I thought I'd share with you some of these trail cam pictures because they are pretty, pretty cool. Um, just realizing now the dates and times are definitely off, but um, these were taken over the past couple of weeks. And so I was able to figure out that the culprit here was a groundhog or a woodchuck and um so the little burrow is just down here kind of below where this woodchuck is hanging out and you can see that it's got its mouth full of all kinds of leaves so it's making some kind of a nest there so it's probably has some young down there or is preparing to so pretty pretty cool and it was pretty obvious that it was a groundhog from all the different pictures um of of it coming and going. So um, not only did I get lots of photos on the trail cam from of groundhogs, but there were other animals too, a couple of squirrels hanging out there. Um, let's see, this one is a deer. So there's the deer just hanging out right there. Um, some more deer photos. But then I love this one, a little fawn happened to come across the, the trail cam right there in the bottom right of the photo. And then there's another picture of it there. You can see just how lanky it is, <laughs> its little skinny long legs. And then here's another picture of it too, kind of crawling over the fallen log. So some deer photos there, of course, lots of deer. Um, there was a fox one night, probably a red fox. And then here is a picture of a raccoon. And then there was some more raccoon activity as well. So um, there's another raccoon and another picture of the raccoon. So some pretty cool diversity out there and then finally if you look really 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 closely in this photo here whoops um in the bottom right kind of here almost in the center um if you can see where my mouse is moving there is a barred owl so it looks like down here past the log there's a little running stream so it could have been you know drinking or bathing in the stream or maybe even going after um, frogs or crayfish or salamanders are all in there so it could have been going after any one of those but if you look really really closely um, you can see that there's that barred owl right there so pretty cool diversity there in the trail cam um, set up a couple more over this past weekend. So I'll share with you whatever pops up in the next round. So some pretty cool stuff there. As far as what people are reporting out in the bird world, it is definitely still bluebird time. People have reported the first brood of young from the bluebirds are out in the world. And so they are most likely working on their second brood. So bluebirds will have anywhere between two and three broods here uh, a year, depending on the season and how much insect activity is out there and how much food that they can get and when the season starts. So there are quite a few variables, but there's going to be at least two broods out there this year, it looks like. And right now you might see the little bluebirds or other birds, other juvenile birds out there hopping around. We've been getting lots of phone calls about this as well. Um, if you see a little bird that looks like this hopping around on the ground, that is completely normal right now. When they leave the nest, they tend to kind of stick around the same area, but they are on the ground for usually a few days. The adults still come and will feed them, um, but this is totally normal. So they don't need to be rescued or anything like that. Um, just make sure you know, you keep, if you have an outdoor cat or something like that, definitely keep it inside. Um, but this is totally normal and it's part of their fledging process. So don't be surprised if you see, you know, young blue jays or even woodpeckers or sparrows, or any of these young birds just hopping around on the ground. They might be uh, flapping their, their little wings a lot too. That's a way for them to get attention from their parents to bring them some food. So totally normal this time of the year, but this is what a juvenile bluebird looks like who's just fledged. You can see it's, its feathers still look kind of stumpy too. It hasn't grown into its feathers yet. And then as time goes on, they'll start to kind of fill out a little bit. 
and look like this. So this is your juvenile bluebird and they tend to stick around and help raise the next round of bluebirds from their parents. So you might see them hanging around all summer long as a family group, which is pretty cool. And as far as feeding them, they love the live mealworms. We do have live mealworms here um, for both the bluebirds and orioles. Now we'll also be eating those. So we do have those. We also have freeze dried mealworms if you don't want to deal with the live mealworms. So we have both in stock right now. And those are great, not only for the bluebirds, but any of these juvenile birds. And once the eggs of the adults have hatched, they feed them lots of insect material. So you'll see that they really, really love those mealworms. Um, oriole activities, some of these oriole nests will start to empty out and you might start to see these juveniles coming to your feeders. I just realized here in this picture, there's one of those ladybug nymphs here in the corner of it. Um, so this is what your typical juvenile Baltimore Oriole will look like. And if you haven't seen them around in a bit, if you haven't seen Orioles around at all in a bit, don't be surprised if they start coming back to the feeders now with their babies over the next week or two, because um, once those babies are, young, are old enough to leave the nest, the adults will start bringing them to some different food sources and kind of teach them where those are. So a lot of times they'll come back to your feeders and those adults will grab a beak full of jelly or a beak full of mealworms and feed the baby right there at the feeder, which is really, really fun to watch. So keep an eye out for that. If you kind of gave up and your Orioles were gone for a couple of weeks, I would suggest putting your feeders back out uh, because you'll probably start to see some of that activity of the young coming back to the feeders, which is pretty exciting. Um, hummingbirds, people are reporting hummingbirds coming back. Um, the activity in general hasn't been that good this year, uh, but that being said, over the last couple of weeks, people are reporting more and more. So it could be because more plants are out in bloom that they're starting to kind of disperse a little bit more and go to the different plants that you might have in your backyard. Um, lots of the, these blooming plants are starting to pop out. This is one in my front yard called Indian Pink that I really like. Um, so a lot of these red tubular flowers are starting to bloom and they might be attracting more hummingbirds. So if you hadn't had any hummingbirds yet this season, I personally haven't had very good luck with them at all. Um, they might start coming to your flowers. So you never know. Keep an eye out. Um, they'll be here all summer long. They're here through Labor Day, so they will be here for, for a while longer. Um, some different birds you can be out on the lookout for. The cuckoos. There are birds that we have around here called cuckoos. And they have really long tails. They have kind of long bills. So those have been started to be... Um, seen around here, especially the yellow-billed cuckoo, you tend to see more so than the, the black-billed usually. So this is your yellow-billed cuckoo. Also, there's nighthawks that are flying around still in the evening and the dusk hours. You might see them um, flying over fields. They have these bright white stripes on the bottom of their wings. So be on the lookout for the nighthawks. And then you guys have been sending in some fun photos. Here's a picture of a merganser sent in by Karen, who says this female merganser took a break on our beach in Canandaigua. So this looks like a female, um, looks like it could be a common merganser there. It looks like it's got a black colored eye. The red-breasted merganser will have a red eye. So pretty cool photo there of a merganser female. And some hummingbird photos here that were sent in by Mark. Mark sent in a whole bunch of different pictures. Um, he says, Humming, ruby throated hummingbird in my backyard. And then he sent in this beautiful picture here of a really nice male ruby throated hummingbird. He says, ruby throated hummingbird has been coming to my feeder on a regular basis and finally got a pick. So that was sent in again by Mark. Um, here's another neat photo. This is Baltimore Oriole mobbing an osprey over the pond. And then here is a juvenile tufted titmouse. This was at the Erie Canal Lock. And you can see it's kind of all disheveled. This is a typical uh, baby bird photo here. They look all just kind of like they're like they just woke up or something and their their feathers are all kind of crazy looking. So um, it's a fun time of the year to see birds that look like this in your backyard. And here's a tufted titmouse juvenile. So a really fun picture there. Um, a willow flycatcher, he says, willow flycatcher singing away. And that was at the Erie Canal Lock. And here's some American coots. 
American Coots feeding their young. This was out at Montezuma. You can see their, their young here better in this photo here. The two on the left are the young American Coots. A lot of those are out at Montezuma if you head out over there. And then look at these stunning photos, much better than the photos in my trail cam of the barred owl. But he says, here's the barred owl I saw at Sterling Nature Center back in early May. It was quite the experience seeing a pair hooting and flying across the road. So here's barred owl. Uh, they are expanding in their range. And so if you've never seen one before, there's certainly more and more and more out there for you to discover. They don't have those feather tufts on the top of their head like a screech owl does or like a great horned owl does. So they just have a round head and they have those really, really dark eyes. That's another really good distinguishing characteristic of the barred owl. So got a lot of those out there where I go camping. They just have been hooting and hooting. Um, all evening. So lots of barred owl activity out there. And these are some great photos that Mark sent in from Sterling Nature Center. So really neat. And then he's been sending in photos of this uh, northern flicker and its nesting site over here by the Erie Canal. And just sent in this new picture here of a flicker woodpecker feeding its young. So those young are probably going to fledge pretty soon. That looks like a pretty old nestling in there. So any day now those woodpeckers should be out in the world. And these are some older photos he'd sent in, but those pileated woodpeckers, I just love this picture here of the juvenile pileated woodpecker. And you can kind of see what I mean about their feathers looking all disheveled once they've recently fledged. So they're still growing into their feathers. Some other things to be on, on the lookout for as far as in your backyard are indigo bunting, this beautiful bright blue bird. Um, the male and female, this is what they look like. The female is very brown, but she has kind of a bluish tinge to her. And they do come to feeders here and there. They'll, they'll come to seed feeders like Niger feeders and uh, feeders of sunflower hearts or millet. So they do like those smaller types of seed. So that's your indigo bunting. And people sometimes do get scarlet tanager in their backyard coming to sunflower hearts, but especially water. If there's any kind of water or a moving water feature, that's one of the best ways you can attract a scarlet tanager to your backyard. So they're here all summer long as well. They'll sing throughout the summer. So keep an eye out for scarlet tanager. Really gorgeous bird. So thank you guys for watching. I should mention not only do we have that bird walk coming up on Thursday, but we do have our caption contest going on on our Facebook page. We just got in Celestron, some Celestron objects. We've had a lot of people asking about Celestron, so we got in some of their binoculars. We also got in some of their telescopes. Everybody's really excited about the eclipse that's coming up in April of next year. So we've got the full solar eclipse happening in April of 2024. But then there's also a partial eclipse happening this October, which people are excited about. So not only do we have those eclipse glasses so you can watch it safely, we also now have scopes or telescopes. We've got some celestial binoculars. So we're starting to get into some of that astronomy type of, um, type of products as well to kind of prepare for this. Um, eclipse that we have going on. We also do have live mealworms back in stock. We've been selling lots of live mealworms for all of those Orioles and bluebirds. So we've got those back in stock, both in 500 and 1,000 counts. And we do still have plenty of jelly. So a lot of you guys are still getting Orioles coming to your jelly feeder. We have plenty of this birdberry jelly, which is a mix of grape and blackberry, which the Orioles absolutely love. So we do have plenty of that in stock if you're still getting Orioles. And this is a great thing to put out for those juveniles. So once they've left the nest, they will start coming back to the feeders with their parents. And then that is what they absolutely love. And you don't need anything super fancy to feed the mealworms or the jelly. Just a little dish like this is perfect. That's really all you need. And then we do have different things to keep out the insects as well as the months go on and there's more and more insect activity out there. We have things like ant moats, like this little thing or a nectar protector. Um, you can hang this above your feeder and you fill it with water and it makes it so the ants can't go across the water and get down to your feeder. So we have different things like that. We've got bee guards, depending on what kind of feeder you've got as far as hummingbird and oriole feeders go. Some of them do have bee guards. So we've got all that going on too. So um, 
If you are in the Rochester area, stop by our bird walk on Thursday. That should be a lot of fun. You can get more information about that by visiting the birdhouse ny.com and let's see there's some of you guys on um, debbie is on from mastic um, she says what a stunning picture so beautiful i think that was about the um the deer picture that we have the uh, caption contest going on for she also says i found a small woodpecker nest in a in a tree in my yard. I can hear them. They sound like they're so small. They, they could be. They could be just hatched. If it's just little cheeps that you're hearing coming out of that nesting cavity, they are probably quite small. So keep an eye out for those parents bringing food uh, to, to those young. So you'll probably see some of that activity. Um, Randy says, have a birdie full day, everyone. Yes, um, that is a good Good way to, to sign, sign off area. Yeah, everybody have a birdie full day and uh, we will talk to you soon and have a great week.